So hi, let's just start the recording of a tutorial on a gate level simulation and timing analyzer tools. The stuff that you find in P4 project. Hmm? So let's take one of the circuits here, for example the arithmetic circuit 8 bit other and subtractor for choose complement numbers, uh, numbers that has sign integers, right? This is the symbol that you see here, the symbol of the circuit and we have decided to name it integer add subtract a bit. So this is the chip that we have in mind to design. So the question now, the objective of this lesson is very simple. How fast is the circuit performing calculations? Or in another way, which is the maximum speed of the circuit when synthesized for a Cyclone 4, an FPGA CE 115? Exactly the one that we've been using in the lab all these days, in the sessions, in the lab sessions. So, it's about technology. Everything related to technology now is going to be around, you know, programmable logic devices. You know that we've started the course talking about classical chips, like CMOS technology or TTL technology, but those are far away today. Almost everybody is using programmable chips to synthesize logic circuits, even the simplest ones, because they are reliable and reconfigurable, you know? So, uh, if this is the, the typical target chip, is a, is going to be a programmable logic device, whatever it is from Lattice, Shiling, or Intel, for example. And this is nothing but what you see here in one way or another, an array of thousands or hundreds of thousands of logic elements and interconnections where in the end you can get the logic functions and uh, using this array uh, you can design extremely large circuits and powerful ones, okay? So this is the typical layout for all of them, but if your target chip is an FPGA, you know that what you have in mind is a LUTI, a lookup table, which is nothing but a RAM, a RAM memory, which is used in this FPGA as the element for implementing logic functions. This is a typical Cyclone 4 device logic element, and you know the one encycled in green is not used for a combinational circuit, because what you see here is a register. So let it be for chapter 2, when we have to implement memory, not now, because what we've got in mind is a simple combinational circuit. So the LUTIs is what we need. Normally they are four inputs and one output, and you have thousands of them, and then you can interconnect to build whatever. Or instead, if the target chip is a complex PLD, the, the idea is... Uh, the one that you've got in plan A, you know, you have an array of programmable products. You see here, for example, 49 and many more, whatever, the number of products and a final sum. So in the end, what you've got here is a sum of products. So the macro cells, sum of products like this one, is what is the logic element for complex programmable logic devices for implementing logic functions. And again, this is connected as well to a register, but not this time, because what we've got in mind is a combinational circuit. So, uh, you know that this is nothing but a continuation of our well-established BHDL design flow that start with the specifications and then the planning and then the development and then the functional simulation where we end almost all our projects now but you know this is the fifth step the gate level simulation to see the performance of the chip in the real world how, how is going to be out of the computer simulations how is going to be for real because once you've been through this simulation, you can finally go and program the chip in the lab and just go prototyping. So this is, this is, you know, a simplification of our design flow, which is available through this, 
through this uh, PDF. Okay, the one that you see in P2 or P3. The specifications, what do you want to design, the planning idea, plan A, B or C2, and then the development which generates a circuit that you can inspect through the RTL. And then the functional simulation is what follows, where you have, you've got the test bench in BHDL from a sketch that you've got in paper. And now you know that the circuit works ideally. So here you are, the second part, where you assign pins with a given prototyping board and you start the process of fixing the circuit in a given technology. And so here you've got the gate level simulation, right? This is what is the purpose of this tutorial. Let's talk about of using yet again the same test bench, but now uh, for implementing a gate level simulation to determine these electrical characteristics and futures of a given chip, you see? This chip, for example, this chip from Lattice, how fast is it implementing another? That's the point. All right. So, if you, if you know where you are, and what you have to do, and which is the aim of the tutorial, you can continue very well uh, section by section, you know? This is what we are going to do. We are going to start specifying as usual, then we will go through the planning, selecting naturally this time the plan C2, because the circuit has some complexity, and once we have fixed an schema, we will develop it using Quartus Prime, and inspecting the RTL, running the functional simulation as usual and once here at this point in the design process we will finish with a gate level simulation and perhaps if it's possible we can go to the lab and see how the chip is performing for real okay this is the panorama so let's just start with the specifications okay indeed we are going to go very fast through the specifications and planning and developing and function simulation, okay? Functional simulation, because this is the classical thing, the usual thing that we do all the time. But let's, let's go and let's explain something about uh, what is the circuit for. So let's go from home in Dixis down to P4. And in P4, we have the full range of specifications of this circuit, okay? Uh, it is going to be about adding numbers in the range of minus 128 and up to 127. And if OP is 0, the system will add. And if OP is 1, the system will subtract. And when performing operations, if there is an overflow, you will have a flag indicating that condition which means that the output range of the operands or the operand the result is out of range okay so that's the circuit and precisely the one which is going to be included later along with a comparator in the design of the PLA 1.2 but that is later now we have in mind simply the uh, you know, the planning and the developing and testing in two ways now, functional and in gate level of this circuit here. So let's go down to the... Uh, you see, for example, if you see uh, many more arithmetic circuits in this picture, you know that the circuit that we have in mind is simply that one here. You know, arithmetic blocks for integer numbers in two complements. So you can add, subtract, multiply and compare naturally and many more uh, arithmetic operations. But this time is going to be about adding and subtracting. So you've got the learning materials to just to prepare and get the concepts. And then you have to continue uh, to the planning because, you know, the, the idea of arith arithmetic is it, it's you know, something that we've done in class, 
and there is nothing else to say here but well if you like you can go and have a full discussion on the specifications uh, having some examples of operations and you can browse uh, problems and theory and notes and many other stuff but that is not now because we will go speeding this okay so if we know what we want we have to go and continue with the planning all right and the planning section is what goes below planning you know for example you can just follow the steps one two three four in this way and you need some notes and to, to just to figure out the circuit in fear a good one for you to to be translated later in development into the hdl file so th this is a plan okay so this is what we've got in mind for example a circuit that is going to be like this okay it is going to be hierarchical and internally in the architecture you will find an other 8-bit modified in some way to be able to generate an overflow signal and you are going to use this component here the chip one along with some logic gates to generate extra uh, extra logic functions like the vector key right the vector key is the one that is going to be b if op is zero but b not if the op is one because this is what you are requiring in case of having to subtract you see you are going to add all the time taking profit of the same other even if you are subtracting and how are you going to do that you know the algorithm is adding a let it be as it is plus you know the choose complement of b which means something like b naught plus one and you see so the op is going to establish this when one you will have a not in key so you are going to add here in the end using the chip one a plus b naught plus one in the carry in because this is what you've got in the op input so if this is your plan you can uh, fix here a project location and a project name and then you can go down here to the development right so this is what goes next to develop conveniently the project we have to go to the web page and find all the files all the source files associated with the given plan that we have in mind okay the one that we know very well so all these files are here under the heading development the other one bit the other four bit the other eight bit and the top entity integer other subtractor a bit so let's copy them all to the right folder in the drive okay so let's save all the links to the right place and those links are the l cst before and now let me start a new recording you see i've got set that project solved several times so new folder integer add subtract 8 bit that's the project the folder name so here is where we are going to save every single source file for each component save the link in the same place save the link in the same place and finally the top entity save the link that's it so once once we've got the files we have to switch off everything and go to the unit and start you know The project you can just inspect them all and the next step the next step here is to run a quartus prime okay 
so let's let's open the synthesizer and the program the, the project environment Okay, an empty space for configuring the project. So file now, new project. And this project is going to be the, the unit that we have in mind. So L, uh, CSD, P4. Uh, it's not open, but new file, new project wizard next the working directory is going to be exactly this l csd p4 integer and subtractor this is the project so now folder so i will name the project as usual this is going to be prj and the top entity is just the integer other subtractor 8 bit so you have to say next empty project and now you can add them all the machine identifies all the source files belonging to the same structure you may say next and now the cyclone is the right one to choose so you may say 115 and now let's select it it's that one here or the seven perhaps this one the 29 c7 next and now let's pick up a simulation tool model sim altera and let's choose vhdl as the format for the project we may say next and we have a summary here if everything is all right you say finish and now the machine will try to organize this correctly and to do so you have to see if every single file is here okay this is the top entity okay and the architecture you see consists of a single component and then signals the name of which are in the plan so this is what we are going to instantiate and synthesize so once you have inspected carefully if every single file is in place you can say uh, start compile compiling and now the machine will start the design flow that goes from analysis down there to the timing analysis precisely the one that we are going to solve today okay so when the circuit has been synthesized with zero errors you can go and inspect using the tool the netlist viewer the rtl the ideal circuit and this is the way is going to look like exactly as we have planned you can go to the inner section of the other 8 bit and you can see every single device here all right so very well the next thing that we can inspect is precisely the objective of this tutorial today the technology map right this is the circuit that we will investigate how fast is it calculating so this is the technology map and this is the 8-bit other and in the end you see the logic cell is what we've been talking at the beginning the one that is going to implement you see a given equation all right so you've got the logic element and here you see this box uh, showing you what kind of equation this logic block is implementing 
And now we will speed up because now you know that there is the time to generate a test bench. So you have to go processing and you have to say a start and you have to say test bench template writer. So let's go to simulation, model sim, and let's copy the file bht, control c to the right place, which is the folder where the project is located, paste, and now it's time for renaming the file to be testbench and bht, right? Let's change the name and extension. And this is the file that we have to modify conveniently. You can do that from Quartus itself, adding this file to the project. For example, let's add this file to the project now that it has the right name. Hmm. What is this? Uh, yeah, that's the project TV. So you say OK. And now you can go editing this test bench that has been generated just now. Okay, so this is the entity, the component to be tested, and the many signals that will connect the component to the stimulus process. So let's see what we can do now. We can place here before begin. We can go to the web and inspect the one which is an example and we can go and copy something like the constant mean pools, right? Control C and place it here. So this is going to the constant. So we can run, for example, if this is 15 microseconds, so we can run for 300, 300 of 3000 doesn't matter very much how much time we enough time to run all the stimulus so 300 microseconds and now we have to replace the always process and the init process both of them okay for something that we can copy from the web so the init process starts here you have to be careful with this take the process all together in it process and end in it process and the always the same you see delete and now in this section we will include okay the example test process that is in the web so down here you have the end process and a stimulus process control C so we, we can place that here very well and this is the process in the end to stimuli the circuit okay it is simply applying numbers and waiting for results so you, you know you can say very well that if you like to add for example plus 10 you know this is going to be an operation of addition you know so plus 10 plus another positive number this time plus 6 you will get something like plus 16 i guess right so something like this is what is the expected result in this circuit so you can go and add more than that and change at positive and negative numbers as you like for example this is the number minus 12 and so on and on so now once the the typing of this file has been finished you can just go and run the simulation tool which is for generating the uh, the uh, the functional simulation so the model c mintel opens and now it's time for you to go and say new project and the project name and location is going to be as usual control C so this is the project location right 
integer add subtract a bit the project name is just the same name but functional simulation and the library is going to be work functional that way so you say okay and the machine has to start the new project so now is your turn to add the corresponding files of the architecture which is other one bit for bit a bit the top entity integer and then the test bench which is that one here open all of them and combine together so that now what is this because i don't see the right layout so now yes so, so in the end you've got all the project interpreted correctly zero errors so now it's time to start the simulation and what exactly are you going to simulate the, the, the this this entity which is the integer rather substructor a bit bhd tst that has been generated automatically by quartus prime you say yes and now the machine starts a wave Or something like this and if not if not the case you simply have to say you know with a right click on the top project you say add to wave all items in region you do that and now you've got them all here you arrange the windows in a way that you can see the signals of your interest all right and now you see everything everything is unknown but now it's time for go and run for example 1000 microseconds so in the end you can zoom all selecting the window and here you are the results so you can say radix it's going to be decimal you see not unsigned this type but decimal so this is what you've got okay it works fine functionally so now it's time for assessing what happens in time okay so because here if you see if you are pinpointing a specific transition you see that even if you go zooming 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 all the time doesn't nothing changes even if you go to the region of picoseconds the transitions the you know the the input are going to change values and the output changes immediately doesn't matter how much you go zooming that all the time you see you've got the same ideal results so there is nothing to say but that this is an ideal circuit naturally so now we will do the same kind of uh, simulation but from the gate level point of view but first of all for example let's save the wave okay let's save the wave uh, file you know save it's going to be the waveforms okay you say okay so now file quit so now you are again in the quartus prime environment and now it's time for continuing with the gate level simulation once you have been uh, checking that the one two three four goes right and you have an ideal circuit so now the next step is the gate level simulation so in order to start this gate level simulation we better go to uh, the web and see the testing section in gate level simulation the one that follows up with the testing functional simulation naturally you have to go first annotating the waveforms to see if everything is correct but then when that is solved you can go testing gate level and this is the kind of picture that you are expecting here okay you like to get results but after all this long time you know for example nine nanoseconds in this example here to get something 
like the correct results, the expected ones, because in between you have plenty of false results because you know the signals go propagating from one gate to the next until in the end that gate that they got a stable. So in order to follow this tutorial, you run this. Uh, the, for example, this picture here is taken from the tutorial. The objective of this uh, recording. So you see, you, you go down to the. Everything is right here. So you go down to the final gate level simulation, and this is where we have to go now through. But instead of watching picture by picture, just following the recording. So you can repeat it correctly in your own way. So in Quatus Prime, in order to proceed with the gate level simulation, you have to select the device, you know, the integer other subtractor 8 bit, and with a right click you have to be sure about one thing that in this with a right click, you know, the settings that are related to the EDA tools, okay, has to be all off, specifically the ones uh, related to the simulation, you know, EDA tools settings, simulation, and here you see everything is all right, but when you say more EDA netlist writer settings here, all of them has to be set to off. Be aware because you see the generate functional simulation netlist is set by default on so you have to switch to off all right so all the values here has to be off to run rightly so you say okay and now okay so the next step here is to transform to transform or to write or translate what was the technology view, which is now the objective of this project. So let's go and transform this technology view into VHDL. So this is going to be solved automatically if you click the EDA Netlist Writer, okay, in the processing section, start, this time not a test bench, but that one, start an EDA Netlist writer okay so this is the most important thing you have to say click so now the technology view picture or circuit the real one is translated into the HDL with zero errors and this means that the corresponding files are here and which ones are those files well the ones that has the standard uh, standard delay output file and uh, the one that is the BHO both are generated automatically and they are left in the simulation model sim folder so those ones are the ones that are going to be simulated instead of the pile of BHDL files belonging to the ideal circuit so now we will talk about the real circuit, which is this one. Okay. So the next project is going, the next simulation project is going to be about these two files. You will see in which way. So once you've got that thing, the a structure, the technology view translated to VHDL, along with the delays. Okay. SDO, you can go to tools and launch a gate level simulation. So from Quartus Prime, launch a gate level simulation. You may select a timing model, but that is not important now. You, you say run, and now the gate level simulation is going to open. And so it happens for you to have a new window with no projects this time. So or if there is a project here, you have to delete or close. So close all the project that you've got here. You see no projects open this time. So new project again. This time is going to be in the same location as usual. You see uh, integer other subtractor. So you say control C. 
and this is the place where you are going to save the project gate level simulation so now the project name is such a thing as integer add subtractor 8 bit and now gate level sim and the work the library is going to be work gate level that's the naming convention that we will use once and again so it's as usual but be careful but because this is a new project a gate level project with a new library okay work gate level in the same location right so you say okay and now is the key thing the key thing goes here this project is going to be about you know a test bench where the unit under test is the real one so you have to say at existing files you say browse you see but now it's not time for selecting anything of this except the test bench if you like yeah the test bench is all right so select the test bench first you say okay okay right the test bench is okay and now you may say add an existing file which one well just pros so not here but down there to simulation model sim okay and here is where you have to pick up both of them for example the integer other subtracted a b b a j o and the the that one okay okay you say okay and if you like to remember you can add here the one which is related to the delay so add existing file in the same place you know simulation model sim and now you see you have to change the file extension because it is a delay it is a, a file related to delays so you know you have to take that one which is the integer add subtract a bit bhd sdo right that one here that is the one that is going to accompany the bho the sdo the standard delay file so just to remember that you can add it here so you see the project is going to be as before the test bench but now the big difference is that you have a flat circuit a flat circuit that is typed in this bhd file which is the bho right so that's the point uh, if you like to inspect it let let's uh, compile them all to see that everything is fine at this point no errors perfect so you see you've got the test bench and inside the test bench you have the bho and the sdo right and the bho can be inspected the same so you you will see the way it looks like you see this is the technology view something that has been solved by quartus prime and what you see here is the same entity okay but now the architecture is not that one structured accordingly to the plan c2 but a flat circuit you see that is consisting of a component from the library cyclone and uh, you see the long list of signals that connects every single gate to each other and then every single gate definition so this is the file that is the real one to be simulated here all right so let's go so let's go in which way well as usual let's maximize the window and here uh, it's going to be simulate star simulation all right and what is the object of this simulation well the gate level you see now you have both the functional from before step four and now in the step five you have the work level simulation which is that one here right that is what you have to go simulating hmm? the integer other subtractor 8 bit bsd s tst but now along with this file you have to start you have to attach the standard delay file as well okay so you see the tab design is one thing and now 
you have to pay attention to SDF. Here is where the, the, the delay file goes connected to the project. So you have to say add, and now which file precisely? The one that you know very well, which is in simulation, model sim, and that one. You see? Pay attention to this. That's the most important thing. Integer other subtractory bit PhD SDO. The one that you added, you, the one that is added in the project, that one goes in this other tab that you call SDF. All right? So you can open it. And you have to say in which region exactly this target file where every single delay is annotated applies. And this region is the one that you know uh, in the test bench. So if you are inspecting now the test bench, you will see the region, okay? Well, which is the test bench name, by the way? So if you go and inspect the test bench, for example, opening it with the, the test bench, right? So let's open it to see the name. If you open that one, just for a while to see the name, you see, that is the chip, the entity, the test bench entity. So you can take the name, right? Control C. So if this is the name in the window, SDF entry, you have to say paste, okay? So the delay file has to be applied to this region, to this entity, and well, within this entity exactly in the entity's reference okay so which is the entity's reference you see um, so, um, so the entity's reference is i1 you see oh, sorry so the entity is the integer other subtractor 8 bit copy so sorry let's go here you know the entity is that one. No, I don't remember that very well. So yeah, this is a good thing because you see, even me has to go back to the tutorial and see what is going on here. For example, uh, this is the the specifications of this. This is the picture sixteen. So what? we are doing now is precisely the picture 17 you see exactly design this picture and then the 18 this is the file and this is the region yes i was right so th that was the test bench was the re the region was the file test bench so let me do it again it's like that no no so it's like that so you see it's even if you do that very often, it's quite tricky. So this is why I like to record that for you. So copy the entity, right? The first thing that goes here is the entity. And then slash, and you know, the entity, the test bench entity, but you know which device, the chip one, right? And which now the chip one for these people is called I1. So you copy that I1 and you paste it so that, that's the region right so this is the key point you say okay and now you say okay you see a standard delay file for this design so you say okay and now everything is fine in the way that the simulation starts and now the same as usual you may say when you want to switch off this one here so now you've got the wave so you click and say add to add to wave all the items in the region so right you make room to see the waveforms you see a b operation overflow results you can organize the signals as you like okay so now for example you can if you like you can add a divider here Mm. Add a new divider, for example, outputs. So you can set aside the inputs in one side, A, B, O, P, and then the outputs in the other. 
result of a flow sine and z for example like this okay and you can also organize the radix as you did in the functional simulation so a b and result are going to be modify radix you know decimal okay and in this way you can just run now as before for example 1000 microseconds and doing so and selecting the wave window you have exactly the same result as before so you are expecting these results from minus 12 uh, minus 8 or minus 12 minus plus 12 minus 24 but here you see you've got plus 20 122 plus 8 and now the result is of overflow so now you see the key point of the gate level simulation is precisely this thing pinpointing a given transition of signals like this one for example where you see that the outputs are going to change for example from this minus 124 to this wrong value of minus 126 and the overflow is going to go high so that's a good place to see what happens when you start zooming so if you go zooming in this intersection or in this transition you see what happens you, it happens that it looks fine, you know, but when you start zooming in the range of nanoseconds, you see, you see this behavior. This is the behavior of the real circuit. This is it. You've got a transition from minus 12 to plus 122 in A. B has gone from 12 to 8. And the operation has changed from adding to subtracting. And now the result do not appear just now, but it takes a while. You see how much time the circuit is taking to reach the final value, which is the correct one. Well, correct with an overflow, but that, that's not the point now. You see the machine is generating a negative number, which is some kind of absurd. But, you know, you've got the overflow signal that is high. So that is the only thing which is important. So in the end, this is the last, this is the, the time that is involved in this transition. So now you can zoom the full picture of the way in this. And you can just generate the measure just adding a, a new you can insert the cursor with this button, right? So now you've got something like this. You see, from this cursor here in the transition to the other cursor in the end where the signals are, you know, stable, you see 11 nanoseconds has elapsed. So this is the propagation time in this specific uh, transition in this circuit okay these other 8 bit or other subtractor for integer numbers so this is you may say uh, 10.9 11 this is the delay time so now it, it, I mean this is the end of this kind of simulation so you can just copy the window in with the snipping tools or whatever you've got in in hand for example let's use the snipping tools this time the snipping, a snipping tool, right? So click, you say a new capture. So now you can go and click. No, why not? I don't know why this snipping tool is not working. It should be working. Drag the cursor around the area. Now this time, yes. So this is the window that you are interested okay so now it's time for you to add comments here by hand for example you can take the pencil and you may say here uh, minus 12 plus plus 12 this is minus 24 okay 
but here you've got the transition and from this to that you've got 10.9 nanoseconds right so the maximum frequency is just 1 divided by 10.9 nanoseconds okay is less than this value because this is not probably the worst case scenario but you are now can go and take the calculator and just calculate how fast is this circuit performing this addition in this case you know the addition simply tells you that the result is the wrong one 126 but you know overflow goes high so you see this is the signal of interest one which means overflow so this is the kind of annotations i like you to do you see i'm analyzing the signal and getting from this instrument what i want which is the maximum frequency so 10.9 you know x minus 9 this is nanoseconds so 1 divided by this is going to be exactly 91 mega earth so this is 91 mega earth so this is the frequency the maximum frequency or in which you can go switching numbers you know applying numbers and this means that uh, you have to wait that time in order to generate another vector because if here you generate another value for a for example minus 64 what is going to happen is that the chip is not yet settled to the final value and so the things are going to go wrong you know so that's the end of this gate level simulation saving this kind of picture with the annotation so you can report it in the final uh, document right so what goes next is the last tool which is the timing analyzer just to see if uh, just to see and measure which is the worst case scenario because what you see here is simply a transition but you have here thousands of them so which one is the worst case scenario that is what you like to know by means of the timing analyzer which is included in the Quartus software right so once in, in quartus you know you can process the information or you have a tool which is not this time the net list viewer but that one here on the top timing analyzer so let's see this spreadsheet okay while the timing analyzer works so it's something like this you see a huge spreadsheet that is going to tell you uh, about the different scenarios when trying to measure the, the propagation time for example so when when in the timing analyzer you you see here a reminder of the many the many things that you can do with this with this tool and the most important now is the task panel because you see in the task in principle now we have no reports of anything yet so in the task you can see what you can do for example let's calculate a report data sheet right so click click and let's see the machine working and now you have what you want which is this kind of uh, listing from input port to output port all right and of uh, an, uh, a listing of the four kind of transitions that you have along the circuit input rising and output rising or any input or any output uh, input or any input rising and any output falling uh, any input falling from 1 to 0 or any output rising from 0 to 1 or just fall and fall an input that goes from 1 to 0 and the output that goes the same from 1 to 0 fall fall so here you are an indication of times in nanoseconds so now it's only about thinking about this 
and which is the worst case scenario. For example, you can see here from 7 to 14, this one from 7 to 14, 7 to 14, and this one pretty much the same. You see, the difference is in the range of picoseconds. It doesn't matter if, what kind of transition you are considering here. But in some way, you've got the worst case scenario, which looks like that this is one, the, the line one on this spreadsheet, you see. If you are changing the value of the input B1 with respect to the output port Z, you know, 14.7 nanoseconds are spent, you know. So this is the time, the propagation, the worst propagation time, because the other ones are not that large you see some signals goes faster for example from a7 to the output sign it takes only about eight nanoseconds to to go right so you have to pick up from this the spreadsheet the worst case scenario and this is the one that you see here so now it's time for you again for capturing this wave this spreadsheet you listing you know at least uh, a while a little bit of it that way and once you've got the picture you can add you know uh, some indications here you see this is going to be the worst case scenario you know that's it so you may say that now if this is the worst case scenario you know you it is about uh, 14 14 dot uh, 8 nanoseconds if this is the propagation time okay the worst case so you can say that now the maximum frequency here is going to be 1 divided by this value you see 14 dot x 14.8 nanoseconds and just the inverse value of it is, is going to give you 67.67.5 okay mega air so this is the maximum frequency all right so this is what you have to annotate because this is the result of adding and subtracting 8-bit numbers in this chip so let's record the conclusions in some way in five minutes. This is going to be the circuit to be tested. You know, the integer other subtractor 8 bit. And this circuit, which is nothing but the unit and the test, it's placed inside a box that we call you know a closed box that we call test bench all right right in addition to the unit and the test which by the way is going to be called by default i1 you know remember the region where the delays are placed so this circuit is going to be real you know the cyclone one and is going to be, you know, a single chip, the name dot bho, and another file which is the standard delay output, both. And so, along with the test bench, is the full project bhd, you know, but the test bench, you know, this is going to be the, the simulation project that is going to be carried out at the gate level. Okay, so that is going to consist of injecting inputs, for example, the A and the B by means of signals that and the OP. And those signals are going to be from this, you know, the signals are going to be from this uh, stimulus process. 
the one that you copy from the web just to start then you can add as many vectors as you like here but the point is to start with something that works at the beginning and then you know you can add the many operations but because if you think about how many operations are possible here you know 2 raised to the power 17 about 128 kilo operations you know D different operations 17 inputs so the ticket in the end is going to generate results the r the flag z the flag overflow and i also know that the flag sign and you are going to use you know a device that is going to be called wave okay and with a wave you know you can represent both inputs and as well as outputs you know so the the idea is to go you see in this way in time the idea is to go applying inputs of this kind and getting results okay so that's that's the idea here of the test benches so this time you know by means of this gate level simulation what you've been doing here and, and well that was the wave so what you've been doing here is something very specific you've been determining here by measuring and by means of the spreadsheet of the timing diagram you know that you've been doing this kind of thing you have in time okay you have in time the signal b1 and at the same time you have the output which uh, you call z right so what is happening here that in some way b went from like this from one to zero at some point there is this transition and you are expecting an ideal signal at the output z which has to be the same thing a kind of a following edge instantly now that way abruptly okay this is what you are expecting in an ideal transition which is the functional simulation this is what you've been all the time there is no time delay but now what you see if you change the color now it's clear right what you see is that uh, let me take another one the green for example what you see is that now the z instead of falling at this t equals zero takes a while you know for example all this time and finally goes down so this is the falling edge that you call uh, the input falling edge and this is the falling edge at the output well doesn't matter in the end doesn't because here we are only in the concept and this is what is has been measured to be 14.8 nanoseconds in the worst case scenario right which means that if you think about this uh, as a system that has to be calculating uh, additions and subtractions at the very highest speed you can imagine this worst case scenario as the minimum pools okay so the mean pools has to be has to be larger than that for example let's say not 14 but let's say 15 nanoseconds okay and stating so you know that the frequency at which you can go calculating additions and subtractions has to be just the opposite of this one divided by 15 nanoseconds so this is going to be a frequency that has to be larger than this value you see 15 nanoseconds it is something like 66.6 megahertz something like this okay so this is the maximum frequency 
so you cannot go uh, applying signals here faster than this absolutely you cannot do that so if this is what you've got now for example for the for the b and the a you know some numbers for example minus 20 and plus 100 if this is a for you and let's say that you know th this is b in time oh. and th this is b that now you like to change from i don't know minus 67 to plus 90 this is what you do okay it means that if now a has to change you see for example from plus 100 to minus 81 you know that how you do that in time you know and using a test bench or for real in the real board you you have here specific times when you have falling and rising edges of the input signals and so you know this is the minimum pulse and you have to respect then you know 15 nanoseconds okay so you can go changing numbers that's that's what the circuit for to, to get results but you cannot go and change a number for example if with less than this time all right you've got it so that's all thank you